Hi everyone, welcome to my kitchen. I'm Helinda. Um, you know what? Um, this is my first time doing all this, and because everyone's been like locked down, most of the, in the world have been locked down, and Australians have not been locked down yet, but everyone's been stood down from work. Only the essential workers, like the police, the doctors, and the supermarket, are still open. Not for myself because I'm working in industry of hotel industry. And our restaurants being closed, and our convention centers closed. So, well, now I'm here at home, and in actually it's a blast too because I always wanted to do, do this for a long time, and um, my good friends, I mean like school meet friends, lovely Intan Narina, she too inspired me on doing blog or cooking um, channel for myself and to share with everyone I'm not really a good good chef but um, I love cooking baking is my passion but uh, yeah so let me bring you this why I'm doing this you know we have everyone's have a lot I believe that most of us love to have cookbook and I have a small shelf like and have plenty of book. I my book, I select, and the kind of book I collect is what I like to eat and what I like to cook. I always call myself a rustic chef, lazy chef actually. But then okay, back to this. Sometimes I can carry on and carry on to something else, you know. But then um yeah. So because of this uh lockdown, stood down wherever down. We at home now. Most of the time we have a time at home. What I decided that I like to go through my small library and read all about my cookbook and go through all the cookbook and um, so I challenge myself to do this every night. You know, I will go through one book, recipe book, or cooking book, or baking book. You know, and go through and um, and and pick one of the recipe from each book and try the next morning. So this is my first day. I am doing my challenge, and also a friend of mine working with me um, in Crown, and she also took this challenge with me. So let's see how she's doing on the other side. Okay, but but for me, I decided to read this book last night. Um, it calls Homemade Pastry, Pastry Make Easy by Vincent Gandon and Michelle Gabrina. And um, I've been going through this book and one recipe that I really like to try from this book is um, Normandy apple tart which means that I love apple pies a lot I tried a lot of recipe apple pie recipe and and this what made me wanted to do this because I never made this before and the method is different the kind of tart is different so that's why I never make this kind of tart so I like to try this and share with you guys and this classic apple tart from Normandy in the north of France is a dish we always include in our cooking classes when we take tours to this region this is what Vincent Gannon and Michelle Gulbrina said about this Normandy apple tart so let me let me go through with you this and let us do together okay so this is my first time doing it so pardon me if i my english my words whatever i saying something like not the right things you know just bear with me and i hope you guys support me on what i'm doing now okay let me go through to make this tart we need a sweet dough sometimes um Maybe the French calls call sweet dough. I'm not sure about that. But then, we, I think this is sort of like a sweet pastry dough. Uh, it's kind of sweet pastry casing actually. So I'm going to tr going through with you guys um, the ingredients, and we're going to do together to make it this um, step by step. So again, I'm saying to you, this is my first time doing this, but I believe this is the same pastry dough that we make before I make before so quite hopefully it's okay okay um let me go through with the ingredients for the sweet dough or pastry dough or pastry sweet something like that we need a butter 
this butter is 90 gram butter okay in this recipe is one um, recipe in making a small um, tart casing tart and I wanted to do bigger casing tart so I double the dough if it's just a leftover that's no issue put in the clean wrap put in the fridge we can use on other different tart okay so we start with 180 gram butter soft butter room temperature butter I'm going to put in here my butter right uh, it's a room temperature but because um, last night is a bit chill here in Perth so yeah it's a bit hard a bit but it's okay you know beauty about this um, pastry you can use your you, you can use your machine whatever machine you have but then in here you see that just use your hand it's simple as that or your wooden spoon and your spatula you do not need fancy things to make this dough you do not need your uh, expensive machine machine maker or bread maker or anything or your tumor mix or anything just, just use your hand okay you make it life easier okay for now and this is 180 gram of butter I have 100 gram of sugar I'm using caster sugar um, caster raw sugar I don't use um, white sugar anymore in my kitchen so I'm using raw caster sugar this is 100 gram 40 gram of almond milk Two eggs, whole eggs. Um, this is fresh egg picked up from my shooks. And we are very fortunate that we have six chooks in the house, so we got fresh eggs every day. Every day. And kosher salt, I mean sea salt, half teaspoon. One teaspoon of vanilla. You can use essence vanilla, you can use. Um, pure vanilla extract is up to you what you have just use it okay and if you don't have just use it just omit it don't worry I know the recipe said it but I think um, from my experience sometimes people don't eat don't have it just use what you have okay that's not a big deal okay uh, in this set here okay this is all the ingredients of of course my flour <laughs> this flour is 160 320 gram flour because I make it double so it's 320 grams so my flour is there and I have a bit of flour here for me to do dusting afterward to see the ratio okay let me tell you about the flour some flour can absorb water a lot some can so it's stated here 320 gram maybe start with 300 gram first and start mixing it if it's too too soft or too soft you can add a bit more you know but if it's too hard it's very hard for you to to playing around again okay it's stated here in a mixing bowl place the butter sugar vanilla essence and the salt sugar salt Vanilla essence, okay? I'm going to put all these things away from me. So, using one hand to hold bowl steady, mix the ingredient together with your other hand until it forms paste style consistency. You know what? You can use your wooden spoon if you don't want to use hand. I will try to use wooden spoon because I think my butter is still not really, really soft. But then I'm maybe I can use hand later. But for now, I'm trying to combine this together to make it paste. Okay, guys, I'm getting through. I bring you guys to do exactly what I'm doing now. So, yeah. I'm using my hand now. 
to feel it. So, Sorry, I'm not editing this because I'm only doing all this um, taking a picture with my tripod trying to take this video nobody helping me now so there's no stop and pause here no editing yet so just follow me in this, okay? so this is your okay like this piece now it said here at the egg flour and the ground milk. So it's done, all this done, put away later. So mix this. I I put all everything the flour in because um my flour is quite a good one and it done well okay on mix this Not over kneading it because um you do not want to have gluten so much in this um though otherwise it make your pastry very tough. You want crumble nice soft pastry when you eat it. So never over mix your no not over kneading your dough. So yeah. Look. It's a nice dough now. This dough can make in advance actually and can put in the fridge and when you want to use it you can just take it out so and you can put it in the freezer actually and when you want to use it thaw it for half an hour and you can use it it's actually easy to to chill it in the fridge and rolling it it's much more easy to handle the dough so this is ready what i'm going to do now so I'm going to put away all this. And I'm going to start rolling it. I'm having my silicone mat. It's easy for me to roll it. I have my rolling pin here. This is my tart pan that I already put butter on it. You know, I already brushed butter on this pan. So I get ready everything. This one already. You can get you guys get ready all your pan and your equipment. This is my dough. I'm not going to chill it. I'm going to put, I'm going to roll it and put it on my pan, and only I chill it before I put in the oven blind bake. Sorry, this is my first time doing this, so maybe the way I put it works. I don't have, I don't write. I just say it spontaneously. No writing. No anything so oh sorry guys i have to put this flour that's the flour so that it won't stick 
overhead. I'm trying to. This glue is very, very soft. It's nice to glue. Okay. Trying to look skilly because it's a bit fragile. Trying to turn it. This pastry is very, very fragile. Don't worry. If it's breaking, we just piece later. Um, make, making this pastry. I don't know what that sounds. It's a phone. using a um, rolling pin that have the end and the end is going to be like measurements the thickness is going to be the same so I'm trying to bring a thickness the same thickness of my dough If it's breaking don't worry so much because you can just piece I mean like I'll, I'll show you what I meant because sometimes my brain doesn't work when I want to say something I'm not a pastry chef so Pardon me, okay? So, I think it should be okay. So, this is my tart pen, okay? A pie pen. I'm trying to Which is my small tools. Actually, I'm going to stay right there. Do not over um, do it your dough, yeah, because otherwise it shrink. It can be shrink later. Um, yeah, you know what? Something we saw in um a professional doing it is so easy, right? But we're doing like don't worry. Take whatever left over here. Pesh this. Just pesh. 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 
keep patching it first and leave the what I'm doing now you guys can keep on patching here this is what I'm saying if it's broken don't worry just patch around here then we fix it okay everything can be done easily you know anyway this is for our family to eat right it's not for a shop it's not for us to sell this is home cooking guys so whatever you want it doesn't look good but this is good it's your kitchen your playground you know so yeah it's look ugly now but then i'm going to do i'm going to rolling it rolling this this is very important to make sure that you butter your your brush you brush your pen with butter so it's easy to take it out later Sometimes um, you do not need to trim it now. You can trim it after you bake it, line bake. So then, because you never know that um, the dough can be shrink, and so as the dough going down, the pastry, I mean. So just leave it like that and trim later after you blind bake. I'm not going to trim now so much. I'm going to roll again a bit inside here. Very even. Anything can be fixed. Don't worry. As I said, this is home cooking for your family. If it turns beautiful, it's a bonus. If it doesn't turn beautiful but it tastes good, why you need to complain? Eat. Alright? Don't make your life so stressed about this cooking. You know, oh, mine is not good as hers. Mine is not good. Mine is not good. It doesn't matter. For me, it's all about your kitchen, your food. Your playground, your family appreciate what you're doing and what you're cooking and what you're baking and most importantly see their smile when you eat. Yum. So now, let me stop here for a while. I'm going to continue soon. I'm going to do the fillings, apple filling. This is done for me and I'm going to put this in the fridge before we start assemble it with the fillings we have to do the fillings after this this is a pastry sweet pastry dough which they call sweet dough in this book and stay tuned with me i'm going to continue with you soon with the filling the apple filling and for now i'll see you soon bye hi can you can see now the sugar getting melting in this of it takes time guys and um you see i'm not Trying to stir it slowly. I don't want to over stir it because I want it to be still melting easily. You know, I don't want to force them. But then again, can keep on stirring a bit slowly. Just keep melting, dissolving. When you're doing this kind of um, technique or dissolving, uh, making caramelized, it's good to have very heavy pot pan so it won't burn your sugar while you're caramelizing it. Yep. Anyway, you can use any pan you like it, but this is, if you have, it's better. So it will not burn your. Slowly melting and beautiful color came out. 
trying to solve it. My my heat is not it's medium heat. We try to dissolve it slowly. Nice to caramelize this. Beautiful, right? This is all about making pastry patient, gentle. Because I never become a pastry chef. But I love cooking and I love eat sweets. So I really admire who doing pastry chef because they do have a patience and they do have a passion doing the pastry chef things so now you dissolve slowly yeah what I learned is sometimes you don't want it to be burned in between try to now is a technique that I'm learning from my kids or my school time when I'm doing commercial cookery. So, to make it sure that our, yeah, so you wouldn't care. I make it dissolve nicely. Because in the recipe said it, let it dissolve. I can still see the sugar not dissolve properly. The color is really nice, but then keep on like make sure you can still see the cause of the cause of the sugar, the green. So I want it to melt it properly. Nicely melting. This is really have to be patient. Making this. The sugar is still not dissolved guys so we keep on stirring okay until it dissolves hi guys this is a sweet pastry that we make it just now and we chill in the fridge and this is how it looks like actually I've been forgotten to tell you that before you put chill your pastry you should poke a bit of with fog so that it makes your pastry go flat when you blind bake it wasn't puff up so this is a simple is this is normal technique of blind bake make a few with your fork just poke it poke it okay I already have here Baking paper. Okay. I have my beets, wheat. If you don't have this, don't worry. Use rice, manbing if you have anything. It's not enough for me. I have 
the bits that yeah so just try so that your to put a weight on your pastry dough so it will not puff up it's just going to be sit down but again don't worry about anything just use your rice or mung bean or any bean you have in your pantry and you're ready to bake this about 180 degrees or 165 degrees for 12 minutes depends on your oven heat yeah you do not need to over bake this because this is blind bake half bake because we're going to pour the mixture and bake again more all right so guys while waiting for our i'm going to bring it back to apple filling just now i put this in the oven hi okay um now it's time for us to assemble our tart okay what i have now just now the excess of the caramels from the apple that we sieve you see the apple's been coated nicely and it cooked nicely too still have the crunchy bite hmm very nice tastes like a big caramel apple so this is your excess of the caramel 200 of chicken cream pouring cream pour inside here stir keep stirring it's like a caramel right okay then the eggs just now like two whole egg let me repeat again two whole egg and two yolks combine and lightly whisk i whisk it already whisk it already very lightly and i'm going to combine here this is something like making custard so i believe this is custard um kind of uh tart so just mix that nicely mix and combine but make sure everything is cool i mean like warm not really like hot because otherwise you're going to cook the milk with this mixture you're not going to cook this milk not going to be this scramble yeah so yeah nicely nice coated okay now it's time for us to assemble i'm going to put away all this put in the dishwasher i'm so happy that i have this washer so that the job is going to be done by my dishwasher so okay, now the time for us to assemble our tart and we can put in the oven and we can bake it and ta -da! okay stay tuned here that try to put nicely in your your tart. this is our blind bake just now I've been big that I show you just now you see it's a bit golden but not over baking it's just nice that color so what I have now here you can just pour it but if you have a patient you like to put nicely which I don't have I'm just going to put everything in you can do your own if you have the patience and I'm not as I said to you I'm a rustic chef so home cooking it can be look nice later but who cares for me i love good food i like i like i love comfort food i hate i really hate um fine dining food for me sometimes i felt it's not sincere who people who ever eat it because it look beautiful maybe it tastes good but then people will go back and still feel hungry you know i want to have a comfort food in my cooking okay that's it you see you can make it nicely you can put i mean like you can um how to say it? you can put nicely and then uh yeah whatever you reckon for me that's that's good enough <laughs> okay for this this mixture Okay, and it's stated here. Let me 
tell you arrange cook apple wedges in the mold over the tart base and pour in the caramel filling so to the rim bake at 350 Fahrenheit or 170 Celsius turn a light golden color uh, for uh, 20 minutes it can go a bit high you know and the tart is ready when it's turned light golden color and the liquid is set remove the tart from the oven and let it rest for 10 minutes before unmolding it okay so the true moments of what's going to happen with the tart let us see okay so we wait for another 20 and 30 minutes and cool down a bit an hour then let's see whether it's happened or not I'm going to go get ready my ice cream. It's nice to eat this ice cream. See you. Hi guys, I'm back in the kitchen. We continue with our Normandy apple tart. And now, um, the um, pastry dough is still in the fridge to be chilled. And while we're waiting that to be chilled, we're going to make our apple pie fillings, apple tart fillings. Um, let me go through with you guys on the ingredients, what I need for this the filling okay it's stated here that you need four granny smith apple small to medium and cut to wages what i'm using now today is um i mix my apple i don't use all the granny smith i'm using the red uh, rosy apple and also i mix with granny smith and red rosy apple so that you have a texture of bite of a bit sweet and sour taste i mean like i like that kind of apple pie that is my preference you can use um, all green granny smith or you can use all red apple it's up all to what you like to have in your apple pie okay and i have here sugar um this is what i'm saying the um it's not a normal apple pie filling this is like caramel apple pie fillings that um interest me on this recipe i need this recipe as it's stated here um super fine custard sugar which i still using my roche custard sugar um, 130 gram I double it because I'm using a big tart pan okay everything here is double the amount of what the recipe said I'm going to share the recipe with you guys later um, in my Instagram um, HR kitchen heaven you can follow me there there's a few other recipes there too okay this is the raw sugar that I need later and um, sorry I'm out of space here now just put here for a while to drop me and the ingredients i need butter you can use unsalted but I always use salted butter i need 40 gram of butter i need pouring cream 200 ml pouring cream i need two whole egg and one and two two whole eggs and two yolks in this recipe so basically, this is all the recipe I need to do it now. As I said, this is my first time doing this kind of method. And well, it's stated here, we have to caramelize of um, caramelize the sugar. I already put my, already hit my pan here. I'm going to put, cover my sugar. This is going to be a bit process of like, making caramel. Okay. Let it be there. Do not touch the sugar that is soft a bit i'm going to turn a bit my pen so we're doing this process together um yeah just need and wait using my spoon my wooden spoon just get ready your wooden spoon with you hmm. while you caramelize I think in cooking we have to be patient sometimes i don't have this patience this is an issue with me that's why i never be a pastry chef because become a pastry chef you need to have uh, patience and patience patience with just with everything measure everything you have to measure it accurately so that your pastry or your pastry will be so good that i don't have in me okay so I'm not going to touch I'm just going to shake this. I'm going to, uh, this is like a 
basic of caramel rice you need to do. So, let it be there for a while while we can just still chat together. Or maybe I should pause for a while, right? Okay guys, um, it's already melting, I believe so. There's no green inside this. It's totally sugar, no green, it's caramelized. Lowering the heat, you know. I'm going to try to put this slowly, my apple inside here. I don't want it to be like, I'm going to do slowly, okay? I'm going to do one. Slowly. with the butter Melting it. Coating. Let the caramel soak. So, you can see a bit lump here. I'm going to make it, you can see a bit lump here. So, I'm just leaving it in this so that it's going to melt it again to make it caramelize it. So, it's okay. You need to just leave it in here for some time. Um, as the recipe is saying, um, you add the cup of wages and the butter, continue stirring, then should the wages become coated with the caramel. And cook until the apple apple wedges are dente, glossy meaning. Okay, so just keep on cooking and melting this this caramel sugar still here hardened. So I'm going to make it melt first before you know. In the meantime, it's still cooking. So I'm going to cook al dente. Meanwhile, it's cooking in the stove. I mean, like in this pot. We're going to blind bake our pastry. Our pastry, uh, sweet pastry just now, our sweet dough to get ready blind bake so that cooling down our pastry then we can start pouring this. In the meantime, just leave it sit here, let it cook nicely. Um, I don't like my apple too soft, I like to be crunched by a bit. So I'm not going to cook it very long, just leave it here for a while. Well, I'm going to bring you guys how to do blind bake, you know. A simple method of blind bake um, uh, before we assembled everything. So I'm just leaving there for a while then um, let's go to the blind bake. Hi, I'm back now. Um, you can see, I'm not going to cook my um, apple very long because as I said just now that I don't like my apple to mushy. I like my apple to be a bit crunchy for my apple pie but it all depends on you guys, okay? Okay, before that, I want to tell you guys 
that the leftover pastry dough which is now I make it to a cookies I make it a small button I spr sprinkle sugar and it become a cookies you know the sweet dough can become a cookies mm. that tastes good actually okay what you have to do is this one you have to sieve this you have to put this way we need this um caramelized sugar to make it our dough I mean like sorry our pastry base pastry fillings We need this sugar. Do not throw the sugar. Do not throw the caramelized caramel sauce just now. Just leave it like that. Cool it down. And after this, I'm going to show you how to make the fillings as a recipe book. This is how it looks like. Sift it and leave it to cool down. Then we back again. Hi, I'm back. If you can see, this is our end result. I took out from the oven about 30 minutes. Then um, cool it down for 10 minutes or more. I cool down a bit longer. So you can see this is how it looks like. How to? This is a technique how to take it up from the mold okay this is what i've been learned you see Ta -da! isn't it cute oh amazing right so now the moments of the truth i have my no mandy apple tart well let's see what is happening i'm going to put this away all right this one is here in let me taste. I'm going to cut this one. Put in my plate. Guys, look. Look. Isn't it beautiful? And let us wipe this mess so it's nice to go with ice cream but I don't have vanilla ice cream today I have thick cream drop okay oh, it's watery so this it and Enjoy. Let me try. Let us try, okay? Whether it's nice or not. This is my first time baking this Normandy apple tart. Wow. This is really good. Mm. If you love the taste of mm, caramelized and burnt taste, mm, caramel taste, you will love this. It's very rich. It's really, really yum. I can't eat this. Keep on eating this. So, let's try. I'm going to put the full recipe in my Instagram. HR Kitchen Heaven. Please stay tuned and keep on follow me. Bye. Thanks for watching this video. Bye. See you again tomorrow.